The demand has been over the top for me to start a torture chamber series here on the channel ever since I did this pillar video with the hanging cage. So the second addition to the series is going to be this pendulum device. The table swings, it moves up and down. I'm really excited to show it to you and it starts right now on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. I want to first thank everybody for the overwhelming amount of responses I got in the first video in the series, which was the pillar with the hanging cage. I got a lot of really cool ideas for devices for this series. The first one that we're going to do is this pendulum device. It swings back and forth. The table goes up and down and it spins. So you'll have a lot of fun with this on the game table. If you want to build along with me and win a set of plans, all you have to do is like the video and leave a comment what you'd like to see next in this series or something you liked about this build. I'll announce the winner on my Instagram next Friday, so you'll also need to follow me there. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so the second video here in our torture chamber series is going to be this pendulum saw blade trap. If you want to grab the plans, you can find them down in the description below. They'll make the build a little bit easier for yourself and you'll be helping out the channel at the same time. Now to start, we're going to grab some 1 inch XPS foam, cut it into a little rectangular block, and we're going to use that for the foundation of the trap. You're going to need two of these, one for each side. Now we're going to turn the heat on the Proxon just below two. I find when you're cutting with 1 inch XPS foam that this is a good heat setting to allow you to make a freehand cut nice and easy. If you have the temperature too hot, it's going to really melt and burn the foam um, too much and you're not going to get a nice smooth cut. Now we want to add a little bit of depth and dimension to the end pieces here. And we're going to do that by cutting this little arch section out. Now I'm going down about a quarter of an inch with an X-Acto knife. And a cool little tip here, we're going to take an Ulfa knife and in our knife hand we're going to hold it nice and steady on the table and move the foam. And don't move your hand with a knife until this piece is completely cut out. And you'll be able to cut this section out, have a nice smooth cut without having to cut the whole piece off and glue on that little arched section. You'll see I got a little uh, impatient and I popped this piece off and I ended up tearing some foam. Not a big deal. We're going to texture this to look like stone anyway with this uh, texturing tool. I'll put a link up above to the video where I show where I talk about this. I also have another texturing tool that I'm going to use later on in the video, which that video will also have uh, a reference to it as well. Now we're going to cut out some wooden posts. You can see in the plans I show them going down into those stone uh, foundations that we just made. I changed my mind. I wanted to take some barbecue skewers and put those up into the uh, XPS right here and glue those right into the uh, foundation. It's going to hold it a lot more sturdy than trying to cut these into the foam. All right, now this is a real simple part. We're going to make some legs for the table. And real simple, we're going to make this out of one section of XPS foam. We'll use an X-Acto knife to make our faux lines for the legs. And we'll just put some hole marks in there to look like nails. All right, now onto the table. Again, this is just a simple cut. It's a little rectangular piece. You can find this off of the plans. And it's about maybe a little bit less than a quarter of an inch thick. Now, a cool tip. Whenever I'm making planks of wood, I like to go on the very end of the plank and pull in with a pencil or push away at the end and it makes each plank look like an individual plank. All right, so now the piece that's going to raise and lower the table, uh, I wanna have sort of like a little jack system. You're gonna wanna cut four of these circular pieces out. We're gonna make one set, it's gonna be a low setting and another set for the high setting when the table is raised. This is balsa wood. It's a really good wood to work with for a project like this. It cuts real easy. You can put some wood grain into it real easy. And as you can see, all I'm doing is just cutting a piece so that it's the correct height. The plans that you pick up, if you do, 
I'll have a, uh, a dimension on the side of that page that you just saw, which will give the exact size that you need to cut. Now this round piece, we're gonna glue right onto the magnet. While that glue is still hot on the magnet, we'll add more glue, and then we'll add that piece of balsa wood. It's gonna really stick all of this together and hold it together real nice. Then we just flip it over and do the same to the other side. Then for the table, we want a magnet because this is what's gonna stick to that little uh, jack system that we're gonna make for the uh, torture chamber device. All right, a little piece of parchment paper to help cool it. Uh, and have that magnet stay in there nice and secure. And as you'll see when I move my finger, I put a few slash marks in the wood to make it look like the pendulum had cut through into the wood. All right, now we're back to our balsa wood. That's what we're gonna make our cross beam out of. And you can see how easy it is, just like a piece of foam, and this wood actually feels like foam, to put that wood grain right into it. Now this piece, I'll put a link up above to the video where I show you how to make these levers. Um, I'm not going to show you how to make them here, but know that it'll show you on the plan with some dimensions. But those are really good pieces to have just as scattered terrain for regular dungeon crawling. Alright, similar to the section we made for the jack, we're going to cut another round circular piece out. This one's a little bit smaller in diameter, but is thicker than the other one. This is what we're going to glue our pendulum into. Now obviously we can't use the X-Acto knife to cut through that, it's too thick. So we do that real simple and easy with a hot wire knife. The outsides of this I want to make metal and the inside I wanted it to be stone. So I'm just doing a little stone texture for the middle and we're gonna define that line with a pencil and paint the outside that metal color. And initially I had just a few like nail holes in this thing, but that didn't really make sense for the metal. So we're gonna bedazzle this thing and add a few rhinestones to it instead. All right, now we're gonna take the hot wire knife and very slowly, if you ever played Operation, this is where those life skills are gonna come into play. Just burn a hole right through the top of those. And then I pre-tap some holes in the bottom of these wooden logs then we can cut some barbecue skewers, add some tacky glue, and slide that right into place. You wanna make sure not to go up to the hole that we already burned. Now this part right here, I would do almost right at the beginning of the video. Put this piece onto that rectangular block and poke a hole right in the center for where the uh, wooden beams are gonna go. And for this, I'm just using a little bit of hot glue just to keep moving. You could use tacky glue here if you'd like. And you want to make sure to add some wood grain to the top of that post as well. All right, now cutting out the entire rectangular shape right there is going to be our base for the build. And here's that other texturing tool that I spoke about earlier in the video. It's a little bit of green stuff and some sand on a piece of PVC and it's uh, just held in place with some super glue. All right, now you can see a couple little L marks down on that base. I made sure I had this exactly where I wanted it. I put a few marks. That way when I add the hot glue, I know right where I'm going with the uh, stone piece. I wanna make sure I have it just right so that the table fits in really nice between the two. And now we just add a little bit of paint to that magnet, press this down in place, and that's gonna transfer that mark over to the base foam so that we know exactly where to add our magnet. And we're just using the lever here to measure the distance so it's exact. All right, time for a little bit of hot glue. And if you work real quick here, you can see I kinda of got it right where I thought I needed it get the top of that table in place, and you can slide those legs to exactly where you need them so they fit exactly under the table. All right, so I am an organization freak. I've got a ton of like Plano cases, and they come with all these little dividers, and I save them all, and perfect reason why right here. I'm gonna cut this out. 
with an X-Acto. And please don't use a pair of wire cutters. And it's probably not a bad idea to wear a pair of safety glasses as well. If you use pliers to cut it out, you're going to send this plastic flying all over the place. And now we're just going to use an X-Acto knife to kind of taper the edge a little bit and add some kind of chips into that metal. So this looked like it's been, uh, been used quite a bit. Then we'll take another piece of balsa. We're going to cut a little slit in that and then secure the plastic for the blade in there with a little bit of Gorilla Super Glue. All right, now we're going to go back to the hot wire knife. You want to make sure not to go all the way through this piece of foam. So just take your time. If you're worried about going all the way through with the hot wire knife, just use, you know, an X-Acto knife and cut this piece out. Make sure the piece is fit really nice. Then you want to hot glue and you want to do this semi quickly because you want to be able to make sure that the top and bottom are perfectly vertical. So you want to be able to manipulate both of those while the glue is still warm. And this is just a little counterweight that we're going to add to the top of the pendulum. And we'll texture that to look like stone. Okay, so I added a few cogs right here. I'll add all these items that you see in this video in the description below. So you can pick all these items up on Amazon if you'd like to do that. And you've seen this technique plenty of times on the channel. This is one of my favorite clay sculpting tools right here that I use to carve out foam whenever I'm working with it. Okay, now what we want to do, I mean, I'm sure you've done this before. All we're doing is like texturing, adding some chips to the stone. But I wanted to show this because you can see there's a few little lines here from the cut on the Proxon. And don't worry about that. We're going to kind of disguise it a little bit by breaking up that line so that when someone's looking at it, they don't pick up on it as quickly. And we'll do that by focusing the chips in the stonework on those areas. Okay, we're finally at the point where we can add some Mod Podge to this. I like to add a little bit of black paint to it as well for a base depending on you know the project that I'm working on. Since we're doing stone, we're gonna add black to the Mod Podge. Now just follow these colors here for a base coat. I want to go with a typical dungeon stone for the uh, foundation. The slab, we're gonna go with a darker gray. And then um, obviously for the wood, we're gonna use a nice brown and a metal color for all the metal parts. Then we're gonna dry brush everything in a lighter color. For the slab, I want it to go with a little bit of a reddish sienna, I think that's what it is, just to make it, you know, varied up a little bit. Okay, now I took a little bit of a dark maroon, mixed it with a little bit of brown and a lot of water. And I'm going to use that to add the blood stain to the table. And you can see I'm not really painting it on, I'm letting it run through all the cracks with that Q-tip. And these are highlight colors that we're going to use to bring all the colors and make them pop. I'm using the stone around all the edges and wherever we had some chips to add some nice contrast by all the really dark areas. And for this wood table, you're going to notice that I'm not highlighting the center. I'm just going around the edge and almost an oval shape around the middle. Now, I'll put a link up above to my cemetery uh, fence video where I'll show a whole bunch of different rust techniques that I used here in this video. And all I'm doing is adding that rust around the top of the blade. That way we can add some nice, really shininess to the blade portion itself, make it really stand out. All right, now we can finally start gluing some of these things in place. The lever right here, you could actually add another magnet to that. and save that piece so that you can use it as scattered terrain in other dungeons. You don't actually have to glue that in place, but I have a whole bunch of them already, so I figured I would just glue this one in. Now this is some cooking twine that I've added some tan paint to, and this dries fairly quickly. And then with just a little bit of super glue, 
Uh, it almost adheres and um, cures to it almost instantly. So just be careful when you do that. And then we obviously need some more depth and color to that rope. And we're going to really lay the Agrax Earthshade to it. Now, Reichland Flesh Shade is a really good wash for a stained and old looking bloody color. So that's what we're going to use here. We're going to get some on the table and all the cracks on the slab on the floor as well. Now, I don't think the Executioner is taking any Windex to this blade, so we're going to make sure to bloody up the top of it as well. And right here, as you can see, this is where I was talking about adding some of that Reichland Flesh Shade to the cracks. And again, you know, this guy isn't going around with a Swiffer, so we're going to take some Vallejo pigments and add some pigments around the posts, around the slabs, and all the nooks and crannies. And to lock that in place for a small build like this, we'll use some MIG Pigment Fixer. All right, a little bit of tacky glue, slap it in the corner, and we're gonna layer the uh, turf. Okay, this is fine turf. We're gonna use some Woodland Scenics, burnt grass and green grass. I like to do the green grass first, then take some more glue, dab it on top. Don't worry if you take some of that green grass off. Hit it up with the burnt grass. Now this is a really cool technique I'm about to show you. Taking these two inks and that one paint and some water, we're gonna really water it down. You can apply this first to the stone, then add your flock over it. But sometimes I like to do it in reverse and actually um, add some wash to the flocking and the stone at the same time. It adds a third color, a third like dimension to the flocking. Um, so it doesn't look like it's just placed right on top of the stone. And don't be afraid if you move a little bit of it around. The tacky glue is actually still a little bit, um, hasn't cured yet. And I'm just moving it all around and I think it came out really nice. Now you know I had to add green stuff to this video. This is a really good introductory, you know, piece for green stuff. Essentially you're going to make a little inchworm out of it and put it on a piece of glass. And then using the clay sculpting tool, surprise, we're using it for clay here, right? Or epoxy putty. Just sculpt it into what looks like a buckle for the, uh, or a shackle for the table. Using this section, we can add a nice arch to the bottom. Here, we can add a couple of uh, rivet holes and let that cure. Again, I put a link earlier in the video to how I do my metal and rust effects. It's the same as I did here. And you're about to see how nice it is to do this separate than on the actual wood itself. Look at that, it scrapes right up. Clean up is super easy. Now I've got some already pre-painted pieces I can just glue right onto the wood. All right, now I want to brighten up just a little bit of the blood effect. And I'm not gonna let those globs uh, rest there. I'll make sure those go into the crack just to brighten up just a little bit. All right, that's it. It's ready to go. This thing's going to raise up and down. You can maneuver it. You can rotate the table. And I actually had it so that with the paint on it, the blade didn't swing. And it's very easy to make it swing. Just move it around the balsa and it'll start swinging again. But I thought this was cool to have it static to actually show you know, that danger and dread in a static way. All right, one of the really cool things about this craft is that it gets you working with a lot of different types of media on a small scale. What do I mean by that? We've got green stuff in the shackles. We've got cogs. We've got different kinds of flocking and washes that we're using. We've got balsa wood that we're going to use on here. So it really is a good introductory project to somebody that wants to start branching out uh, in their crafting journey. If you've taken anything away from this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on further videos here on the channel. And also don't forget, if you comment on the video and follow me on Instagram, you're entered into a free chance to win a set of plans to build along with me. 
Also, please consider visiting Patreon. It's support through that, uh, that I really have a chance to expand and grow and do new things here on the channel. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.